Nice. Good morning. My name is Bjorn. Uh, I'm the CEO of Travel Coin, and I'm also the CTO of Travelico and OTA. Today we're going to talk about blockchain, uh, and more importantly, we're going to be talking about how that applies to the travel industry. So, this is the agenda. We're going to be talking about what, what makes blockchain special. Why should we care? Then we're going to get into the details of, of how revolutionary this can be for our industry and, the indus and, and globally in the different industries. And uh, then if we have time for a Q&A session, then I would love to talk to you guys after. All right, so blockchain in 30 seconds or less. I've made a video here, and hopefully it will run. Peer-to-peer software technology that protects the integrity of a digital piece of information. It was invented to create the alternative currency Bitcoin, but may be used for other cryptocurrencies, online signature services, voting systems, and many other applications. In this video, we explain how it works and what makes it special. Everyone uses paper money. When you get a $10 bill, you trust that it's not fake. If instead someone sent you an email saying, Here's $10, you probably wouldn't trust it. But when we transfer money, use an ATM or pay with a deposit card, that's pretty much exactly what we do. We're sending money and a digital message. To make sure no one's cheating or sending money they don't have, these messages go through a few trusted banks that keep a record of everything. They know how much money everyone has and deduct it properly for every transaction. But this becomes expensive when there's a million transactions around the world every minute. The Economist estimates that banks charged us more than $1.7 trillion to process these payments in 2014. That's about 2% of the entire world economy. With blockchain, we can save a lot of this cost because it lets us send money just like sending an email. Instead of sending a lot of payment information through a few servers, blockchain uses thousands of personal computers on the internet. All transactions are copied and cross-checked between every computer in a system-wide accounting book called the Ledger, which becomes very safe at scale. Blockchain doesn't just allow us to create safe money online, it lets us protect any piece of digital information. This could be online identity cards, voter ballots, contracts, and many other legal instruments bringing bureaucracy into the 21st century. <laughs> Can you... Uh... Allow is fine. All right. Next slide. Okay. So, no one should care about this. All right. Everyone is asking, what's blockchain? What's the details? This is not what we should care about. It's like asking, can electricity help my business? We don't care about electricity. This doesn't matter. What matters is the key point of blockchain is we don't need banks anymore. We literally, we don't need banks anymore. We don't need the middleman. We don't need someone to say one dollar went from this bank account to that bank account. And that makes things very, very interesting. We also don't care about this. Yes, blockchain is a de decentralized system. It's not a centralized system such as a bank. But as a, as a travel business, we don't really care. Yes, it's decentralized. Keep that in the back of your mind. Not important. The most important part, the interesting part is, how can it really change travel? So let's forget the word blockchain for now, even though it's the name or the title of the, of the presentation. But let's forget that. It's not that important. Also not important. This we can all relate to, all right? How do we move money from one location to another? All right? And right now, there's so many different ways of making payments, credit card being the, the number one, uh, payment companies such as WeChat, number two. But they all use payment channels that we have already are very familiar with. And they all end up with banks. And the banks are making a lot of money. And there's also bottlenecks for innovation that's happening there. You, you cannot move forward because banks are controlling 
how the money gets moved. Now, when you have a way to create money yourself, and this is really what we're talking about here, I'd like to call that money as a service. So let's say that every one of you, you have the chance of creating your own currency, right? And that's something as me and a company, when we were starting to create Travel Coin, is okay, if I can create my own dollar and I can put, I can try and make the industry solve industry problems, how would I do that? Basically, you, you have money and you're embedding smarts, intelligence into it. How would you do that? So with money as a service, you control printing, you control the distribution, you control conversion, the valuation, the governance, how they handle it, and also what intelligence goes into the currency, right? That used to be the domain of countries and banks. You can all do that yourself now. So right away, it opens up for everyone who is, who is an entrepreneur or thinking, wait a minute, I always wanted to do something in finance and fintech, this is for you, right? This is something that becomes very, very interesting. It used to be very, very few players had access to this. And if you were playing in this area of fintech, you were always connected with banks and governments. Now it changes a little bit, okay? So I sat down with my partner, Martin, over here, and we, we thought, okay, how can we solve industry pain points? And there are other companies in this industry that are also trying to solve different kind of pain points for travel specifically. Uh, Martin and I have been in the business for quite a while, and there's three major pain points in travel. The first one, we do a lot of cross-border payments. So I think I have a video for this. I'm going to play it, not all of it, but a little bit. Video, go. Is there a way to press play? Louis is from Canada. He's currently in Thailand and he's looking for his next trip on traveleco.com. He's booking a flight ticket from Bangkok to Bali and a hotel stay with his credit card. Because his card is linked to his Canadian bank account, that's where the money's journey starts. The money is going to Singapore, where traveleco.com is based. However, the ticket was purchased in Thailand. Traveleco.com needs to remit the money back to the Thai PSP from there. Because he's flying with a Dubai-based carrier, the money moves again. Furthermore, that airline needs to pay fees to the Bali airport, so yet another payment happens. For his hotel room, Traveleco.com will need to invoice the hotel for its commission, and the hotel will have to pay us directly or via a commission aggregator by bank transfer. This is just one example of how the money moves in the travel industry. There are many others, and they always involve numerous processes and middlemen. To solve those problems, we have created right. a payment gateway yeah. specifically for the travel can, industry. Can you move it next? enables airlines, Can you hotels, stop that one? Can we move to the next one? Okay. Uh. All right. So the key thing here was travel has probably the most fragmented, expensive payment system in the world. So if you, if you come in from fintech and if you come in from any other industry and you go into travel, you realize, oh my god, we spend so much money on paying fees to banks, MasterCard, etc. Right? So we estimate that about, there's about one trillion consumer payments, bookings happening uh, every, every year. Let's, let's double that with B2B payments, maybe even more, uh, because of what you just saw. There's a lot of payments happening. One booking happens, probably six payments is going out to different parties, right? So at least 20 billion is going to fees, at least, and that's to start with. I'm being very, very conser conservative here. So what if we had a currency for travel? What if we took away all the extra, all the extra payment parties that always were making a little bit of side money, and instead we saved that money, we created our own currency, with our own intelligence to solve our own problems that are specific for this industry, specifically cross-border payments. 
and we had it in-house. That would allow us to save so much money that would then really go back to the consumer at the end of the day and offer up a better experience. And that's when it gets really interesting, right? So a solution for travel that's payment would solve transaction fees, so very, very low transaction fees. It could be a single currency, so we don't have to do it. That's another problem that we have in travel, right? Because this is cross-border, there's a lot of exchange rates and a lot of currency exchanges taking place, and that's all conversion. That's also very, very costly, right? Someone else is making money off of us having to do that. And the third one is something that's specific to blockchain again. That's something where we can, it's not just payment of I send $1 from me to Martin over here. It's more, there is, because there's six parties involved, Martin receives the money. He might be booking.com, for example. He receives the money, but he has other parties to pay. What if that was all automated? What would happen then? And that's a very specific use case for travel, right? What if that could be automated? So suddenly we have a currency specific for travel, works for all travel companies, Every, every travel supplier would be able to be on this platform, transact in this currency, and they can say, listen, I have these specific needs because my business runs like this. I have to pay these three providers. I get money coming in from here. That works with blockchain technology. So that is very, very interesting again. It's very interesting not just for travel. It's very interesting for every other industry so that, has, that has to do a lot of different payments and has specific problems in or they use a lot of labor, labor-intensive work to get money from point A to point B, OK? Second, and by the way, this is these three pain points that I'm saying here, which is payment, loyalty, and identity that we're talking about. We can talk about this in depth, but I, we only have 30 minutes here, so I'm, I'm really going fast through this. So one is really the most important part is payment. If we can solve payment in the travel industry, we will be saving hundreds of billions of dollars that can, we can then forward to creating a better customer experience, okay? So, problem number two, loyalty. And I would venture to say there is no such thing as loyalty. People will go always with the best price. Even the most frequent, uh, frequent flyer, frequent traveler will not be loyal to a specific hotel, a specific airline. Uh, and there's a video. Now let's focus a minute on the TravelCoin loyalty platform and why it makes rewarding anyone for participating fun and engaging. Before TravelCoin, you probably had memberships with 10 different airlines and 20 different hotels. You had no status with any of them because you didn't travel enough to keep your points. On the travel coin platform, you don't lose your hard-earned travel coins. Instead, you can easily see which deal is the best because you are comparing in travel coin instead of having to ask yourself, how much is a Hilton point worth compared to a Sheraton point and when do they expire? Airlines and hotels prefer to outsource their reward programs okay, gonna... to us because the travel coin loyalty platform is free Let's go to and the next incentivizes slide. both supply. Okay. So loyalty programs, to start with, are created to tell travelers they are never good enough. They'll never reach where they want to go. And I think every one of you can relate to this. Overall, on average, in Asia, everyone has about 25 different loyalty programs that they're members of. And within a year, 69% of dissatisfaction among all users because they realize, oh, just another loyalty program that doesn't make any sense, right? Now, how about a loyalty platform for travelers? So this is, it, it all comes together, right? This, this is because we're, there's a lot of, we're solving a lot of problems in one. So we're creating a platform. We're creating a platform for, for not only payments, but also for more added value services because we can add more than just the dollar bill. So how about we start thinking customer first? Exactly. How about we think customer first and not supplier first? Originally, loyalty platforms and loyalty programs were created 
to get them to come back to your company. If we, <laughs> can you guys hear me if, if this goes on? Yeah? Um, if we instead turn it inside out and we say, hey, you can have a loyalty token that never expires. It's valid across all, every, every supplier on the platform. And you have, the suppliers have access to all these customers instead of just the customers themselves on their own silo. And that's what uh, Shane at Microsoft was talking about yesterday. Uh, customers are very, very siloed in travel, and we're not, we don't like to share. So that's, a, that's the second thing that we want to get to here, the third thing. And also gamify the entire experience, which basic, basically says, let's put suppliers together with customers, let's with gamify the entire thing that makes customers really want to come to you because you have a better deal. You're also already saving a lot of money by payments. Now we give them a, a reason to come to you because you can offer better services. And again, there's so much I, I could talk about this, but I have very, very little time. So the third one that goes very much with loyalty is identity. No one really knows who the customer is in travel because unless you're on the cons consumer facing, unless you're a big OTA, you're on the second tier or the third tier, once you get the customer, you really have no idea who these customers are. So you have a very hard time upselling knowing who they are, and really, number one, giving them a better experience, but also making more money on them while you're giving them a better experience. And the journey is what becomes more and more important to travelers these days. But if you don't know who they are, you can't make them happier, right? But if, you're on the, if you have a platform where all the customers are, so multi-part solution, you have Customers, suppliers, they're all on one platform. They're able to now, customers own their identity and they can give you the supplier, they can give you the information that they want about them when they want it. So it used to be, right now what happens is, and I've explained this to so many partners and they, they start out going, why would I want to share my customers? You have your silos of customers that you, share, that you hold on to for a very, very long time. So you have 100 loyal customers, you're a tour operator, you're a DMC, you don't like to share, these are my customers. This is my lifeblood. What if you had a million of them? And the customer got to say, now is the time for you to give me a deal. So instead of having the middleman, and right now the most, most valuable, valuable companies in travel are OTAs. But again, they're actually middlemen, right? They're serving you certain products that you as suppliers own, right? What if you had a platform that said, okay, you have a million customers, 10,000 of them are flying to Singapore in a week, and they're letting you all know about it, and you have the way of saying, hey, I can give you a deal based on your preferences. I know you like to stay at this type of hotel. I know you like, you, you come in with your family. You have a child, five years old. Our hotel has daycare favorite restaurant, food, so on, so on. Becomes very customized, customizable. The journey becomes very personal, right? You change, you remove middlemen, and you, you put product owners closer to customers, and you give them a way to create a better journey. And that is what this can do. So, and, and not, again, I'm not saying blockchain solves this. Blockchain can solve payment in a transparent way, but if you mix blockchain with a platform that puts this all together into one, you have something in travel that can be very, very interesting. Uh, there's some new marketing models here. If you're, if, you're market, if you're a marketer, for example, can you imagine if you suddenly have a platform with all these users, customers control it, but you can, for example, connect now all hotels, all restaurants, all entertainment onto this platform. You go out there and say, hey, bar, restaurant, excuse me, bar, restaurant, hotel, whatever, we will connect you in a way that offers the best conversion for your property. There's so much that can be done here, but it starts with platform and it starts with payment and intelligence. All right, that was quick, dirty, solving payments, solving loyalty, and finally solving identity on one platform. And that's what we at TravelCoin are doing and we're working together with Travelico as well, another OTA that's offering 0% commission. Um, and this is what we believe the future holds. Remove, remove banks, remove middlemen, 
and try and get products as close to customers as possible so the product owners, the suppliers, can offer the customer a better journey. Okay? That's it. So if anyone has any questions, we'll hand out a mic. So percentage-wise, how, how expensive is to, to run the platform? With PayPal, you have 3%. With credit card, you have 2% or whatever. How much is the? Very, very good question. So uh, this is Michael, by the way. He asked a very, very good question. And one of the reasons that when you run on, on a platform, you also run at scale. And when you have your own payment gateway, you also control the fees. So we can also keep it very, very low for very specific reasons. And what we thought of is, if you have a good platform, and you want to really encourage trade between customer and supplier, we said, well, how about we create, and this might be a little bit difficult to explain, but how about we make it so that if customers earn loyalty tokens, and they can give suppliers these lo loyalty tokens in exchange for better services, such as free massage, champagne on arrival, free transportation to and from the hotel, et cetera, and they can use their loyalty tokens for that, how about the platform can also take that loyalty token as payment for their services? So instead of us charging 2% commission for whatever, however way you choose to transaction the service, how about we say, well, you as a supplier, you just got one, identity, uh, one loyalty token from your customer. How about you give us that instead? So suddenly, we can run half the business on loyalty, and that actually creates a full cycle in the loyalty industry. It basically makes it so that suppliers want loyalty tokens to pay the platform, and customers want to have loyalty tokens through making bookings or writing reviews or whatever, so they can give to the supplier, the hotels, the airlines, or whatever. So it's a finally a full cycle, and that's actually how loyalty can become really valuable. Right now, it's only valuable to the supplier. So if the platform says, you know what, we'll take this as a payment method as well, that creates a full cycle, and that makes it very, very interesting. So it basically, it would create, just, to, just on average, payment would be more than half of what credit card transactions would charge you. It would be under 1%, but it can also be free if you have loyalty tokens to pay the platform. So lo think of loyalty tokens as the way to, to make things roll on the platform. It, all, but it becomes good citizenry, right? So you have... You're, you're a good supplier, you offer good services, customers come to you, they want your services, they pay you in loyalty tokens, and it's a full cycle. Does everyone understand that? It's suddenly, it's a loyalty token that makes sense, right? Globally, for everyone. Anyone else? All right. I think we're five minutes early, so thank you everyone.